Dre, let's welcome in our special guest from the Minnesota State Patrol, filling in for uh, whatever the other guy's name Rossi is. Ross P. Yeah, Coltrane. Ross P. Coltrane. It's uh, YTL, Captain Matt Langer. Good morning, Langer. Guys, thanks for having me back. Good nice to, to see, see you. you. How why is YTL these days? Very why. Very uh, why? You no, you're not be, that why anymore, not as, are you? Not as why as you used to be. No. Gray hair, I guess. Oh, do you have gray hair? So, some, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, a little. Yeah, he's all over. How why are you? What's your, how old are you, you Trooper Langer? That's Me what take, they're asking. Take a guess. Uh, I'm going to say 35. 36. Yeah, you guys are close. 35. You're right on the money. 35? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Uh-huh. You should get one of those jobs at the fair doing that. <laughs> well, let's guess you how much you weigh. That. I'm going to guess you weigh 176 <laughs> pounds. What, no. do you, what do you do there now at the State Patrol? What do I do? Yeah. Well, I, I'm the assistant chief, so I do a lot of stuff related to oh. people and policies and administrative things oh, and wow. programs. And, He's a higher up in yeah. the front office. Is that think, fair to that's say? Right. Can that's you fire fair. if you want? Well, that's why Eric's not here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll miss the no, guy. Oh, no, he's doing a good job. He's just at, a, at the Trooper Golf Tournament today. Oh, where are they so, having that event at? It's up in Hinkley. Oh, oh cool. so it'd be a great day to speed. Sure. Well, so you know, I came home from Hinkley yesterday, and a guy in front of me was doing 87 miles an hour. Wow. And before I could get to him, Chisago County stopped him. Well, good. So you're doing all these administrative duties, but they still make you wear that silly suit? <laughs> no, no, we all do. Chief included. Everybody does. What? Everywhere, everybody yeah. wears the suit. Can't yeah. you eventually just put on a T-shirt and a pair of sweats, for God's sake, after wearing that dopey outfit for all these years? No, we don't really. We don't have other clothes. Chicks dig guys in uniform, don't they, Langer? <laughs> well, not brown uniforms. Brown? Yeah, they're like maroon. Maroon, oh, right. Jesus. Right. He's right. colorblind. Right. If you got a question for the State Patrol, by the way, you can call us, 651-989-9393. Langer will take, do I call you Assistant Chief Langer? What is your title? Call him YTL. There you go. He's always YTL to us. He'll He'll always be YTL. He'll take your phone calls and questions. Can you help out the troopers and change the rule about them having to wear that stupid hat? Wow, who? Can you? You're you're, uh, you're a man of power. The whole whole outfit Who doesn't want to wear it? Oh, no, I don't know. I'm not... Outing anybody, I just think it looks ridiculous. <laughs> no, Cal Clowder, it's, it's what do you part, think? <laughs> it's part of our deal. It's who we are. Well, why, why not just get like a cool baseball hat or something? No, oh, I don't know about that. No, I, bet there, the, are, I know, bet there are guys on the force that hate the pants just as much as they hate the hat. Well, Probably. The, yeah, the, a lot of people, the pants aren't particularly comfy. No, but uh, they don't look that way. They're intimidating, and they're, that's why they wear them. That's right. That's right. Now the hat's part of our uniform. It's a big part of our culture. You know, our uniform color goes back to the gophers. Did you know that? We well, did no. know that, yeah. yeah. What do you mean? The or golden? You when mean they went, the, the animal or the football program thing? The football program. Yeah, when they went undefeated back-to-back a okay. long time ago. Like 60 and 61 or whatever it was? Yeah, I can't remember the years off the top of my head. But, yeah, they were. That, we, before that we were gray, and we changed to maroon and gold, and there you have it. Well, it's awful. Remember how we had your mom on the line that one time? No, I don't. Let's go to line one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm just gonna say, hey, good morning. You're on 93. That was fun. That was. Hello? Hello? Yeah, who's this? This is Gary. Hi, hey, Gary. Gary. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for calling. All right. You know what's going on? We got like a cop on the air and stuff? Yeah, I know what's going on. Well, what do you want to know from this dude? Well, the thing is, I got one of them uh, smart start specialized things in my car. Uh-huh. You got a, I'm sorry. Oh, the breathalyzer out. start thing? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I got pulled over here about a couple months ago, and I was at, or the state trooper that I was talking to asked me, or told me that my license was invalid, but I had all the paperwork, and I had everything that I was supposed to have in the car with me. Including a 12-pack? Oh, yeah. No, no you can't no, have that no, no, you. No, I'm no. sure you can't. <laughs> no, I, no I, had the, I had all the paperwork. I had the breathalyzer thing with me. I had everything that I was supposed to have, and they, it still said that I, that my license was invalid. Hmm. I was wondering what I can do about that. First of all, and second of all, is that like is that a normal thing, or does that just happen every once in a while? Well, 99% of the time, what's in our computer is what is what goes. It's what's accurate. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, there's some glitch where somebody does have legitimate paperwork and our computer is maybe a day behind or the system's a day behind, but that's really rare. And even in those circumstances, at least during business hours, we can call and isolate what the problem is with DVS. 
Um, so without seeing the paperwork and knowing exactly what the computer said, it's difficult for me to say, but what you should do is follow up today and get your actual status, like confirm your actual driving status, oh. driver's license status with the Department of Vehicle Services. Yeah, make one of those phone calls. Did you check on it? Yeah, I checked. Everything's good now. I, I checked on it. Everything's good in the computer now. I was just wondering if that's a, a normal thing or if, you know, if that was just something one in a million for me. Yeah, it sounds like it was just a glitch. And if did the guy end up giving you a ticket or did he, since you had your paperwork, he let you go? No, he gave me he gave me a ticket for no driving with no license. But I went to court and I I showed the court that I had it mm -hmm. and they they dropped it. But oh, okay, so you got it all worked out. Yeah, it must have just been a computer glitch. One of them deals. How long you been dry now? Oh, four years. Oh. How long do you have to have that thing on your car though? Two years. Yeah, you. Okay, you were dry for four years, then you had a relapse and got a DUI. Oh, no. I got I got my DUI in 2008. And you've and had I, this ever since? No, I had to wait I had to wait two years to get it. Oh, then, oh gotcha. It's not a quick process. Oh, I see, okay. What do so, you drink now, like near beer? No, no. I nothing. Just, but how does that sucker work? you got to blow in that thing before you can start your car? Yep, you got to blow in it before you can start the car, and you got to blow into it every 15, 20 minutes. What? While you're driving, you have to pull over and uh, blow on that thing? You probably don't have to pull over, do you? No, you don't got to pull over, but you just got to blow into it. It gives you some time, right? I mean, you don't have to create an unsafe situation. It tells you you got to blow on it, and it gives you some time to do that, right? Yeah, it gives you it gives you uh, five minutes to blow into it. So if you, I mean, if you have to pull over, then you pull over. You got five minutes, and then it'll go off. Bro, that sucks, dude. Yeah, so well, I guess my question is, though, what's to prevent somebody sober from blowing into that thing while you're uh, still hammered? Nothing. Oh, they got a camera right on my windshield. And a camera? Yeah, they put a camera in there. Well, how do you masturbate? Well, well, uh, well on you camera. Should, you shouldn't be doing that while you're driving. <laughs> you masturbate on camera. I think that's oh, probably going to get you a ticket uh, who, as well. Who doesn't masturbate while driving? You know, we... We talked about that at one point, that it's possible to, to defeat those ignition interlock. I mean, almost anything's possible to defeat. But if you're crazy enough to drive drunk and have a sober passenger right next to you, right. I mean, that come on. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, that is a good no, Just I to defeat the ignition interlock. it's ludicrous, <laughs> like, but yeah. maybe just to have somebody in the parking lot, if you only have to drive 10 minutes home, right, maybe oh, you'll have yeah, a friend yeah. jump in there and blow on it, it for you and then you I go. Or I guess right. maybe like your kid or something, that's, if you're going to be that irresponsible. Right, yeah, exactly. exactly. True. That, that's why it requires the test, retest every 10 minutes or whatever to to defeat God, that, like, hey, blow in this that. so I can drive home. Boy, does yeah. that sound miserable. That's just a nightmare. But those are all mandatory now, right? Aren't they? Uh, well, the, they're, be they're the becoming fence? a lot more prevalent. What happened was the revocation period's extended, so now it's like, well, either you're revoked for a year or you can be revoked for, you know, 15 days potentially and go on the ignition interlock. The goal is to get people valid and drive sober. I mean, it, uh, I'd rather have them valid and driving sober than revoked for a year right? and, and driving, hoping they don't get caught. So right, in, right, that, right. in that guy's case where there's a glitch, is he... What should he do? I mean, can he drive to, let's say, the DMV to get this thing worked out, or how does that work? Well, it sounds like he has it all squared away now. Having the paperwork with you is a big deal, but even then, it's sometimes confusing. Well, he's got to drive. He's too drunk to walk. <laughs> let's grab another one here. This is Josh from St. Paul. You're on 93X. What's up? Hey, how's it going? Hey, dude. Hey, I got a question. All right, me and my coworker were discussing this because my coworker and his wife got into an argument about this. Go ahead. Who has the right of way at a lighted intersection? If you have a green light and a pedestrian crosses in front of you, do they have the right of way? Oh, yeah. Don't they, Copper? Yeah, they do. With the walk signal on. Yeah, but if they don't. I mean, if they're like, if you have a green light and they just decide to, you know, run in front of you. <laughs> oh, and they have a red light, you're saying? Yeah, they have a red light. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, no. not that. If they're crossing, like, in front of you, not with you, and their light is red, no, they don't, they don't have the right of way then. <laughs> Oh, okay, I can tell my uh, coworker's wife that then, and uh, he'll be happy to know that. Well, yes, now, he will. Other states, it's different, right? In California, don't they have the right of way no matter what? Yeah, pedestrians. You know that's possible. The pedestrians do have a ton of of right of way uh, in Minnesota as well, even at intersections that don't have a stop sign or don't have a light at all. But if they're crossing against a red light and the ve the vehicles have a green light, the pedestrian does not have the right of way. You still should stop. Right. But oh, yeah. the pedestrian does not have the right of way by law. All right. Well, thank you very much. Does Thanks, your buddy Jim. and his wife talk about anything interesting? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you should have asked him, like, Jesus, your fights are even lame. <laughs> Thanks. Kirk and uh, Timber Falls, is that right? At Taylor's Falls. Oh, Taylor's Falls. <laughs> What's up? Hey, I got a question. If you're exiting on a clover leaf 
and the traffic that's coming into the Cloverleaf. Me and my buddy were arguing about this. Who has the right of way? You guys married? The car, the car that's coming into the Cloverleaf or the car exiting the Cloverleaf. You know, that's a little bit of a tough one to answer. That's where we hope that two people can, two people that have never met can kind of get along well enough to either go in front or go behind and get where you want to go. But the law isn't really specific on that in, in those merging situations because we just expect people to kind of get along. Okay. Well, I mean, who who, makes, do, you, who would, do you say has the right of way? What is your argument? Well, no, my side of it, I always thought that the traffic that was coming into the Cloverleaf had the right of way and that the people that were coming off of the exit ramp on the Cloverleaf should yield that traffic. Mm-hmm. But then you could pretty much get stuck sitting there all day, and that's what my buddy was telling me. No, yeah, yeah you don't want to sit down at the end of those ramps. I, that, now, yeah. I can't stand that. Yeah. The safe no, way to go about things is just to always assume that everyone else is doing the right thing. Yeah, that's safe. Yes. Yeah, that'll, that'll get you. <laughs> Where you need to go. Thank you. Langer, oh, hey, a couple of texts here. Uh, does my 18 month old count as a person for the carpool metered lane? It does, yep. MnDOT has uh, agreed that children meet the spirit of that law for carpooling. Uh, now, this person swears they're 100% serious. Ask Roski <laughs> about this. I met a girl with two heads, really. Could one of them text while driving if she keeps her eyes on the road? I'm totally serious here, is what this texter says. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, Sta- come on. Statute would be pretty tough to interpret. That's that probably one. the strangest question we've ever got, that, but it does that's make an you think. One. Oh, I yeah, got a no, it, it would, There's some validity to the question, and I'm, I don't know. Statute uh, wouldn't really cover that one very well. I've got a stranger question for YTL from a text from a listener. Can you ask YTL while, why all state troopers are emotional robots and incapable of love? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd that one come from? Well, it came from a broken marriage, because I believe this is a she who wrote the text, and she finishes it with, shout out to my ex, go F yourself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's good. Jake uh-huh. and Vadness Heights, you're on 93X. Hi, um, I had a question. I've heard the answer before about... Uh, uh, hello? Yeah. yeah. You're funny. I just got freaked out, that's all. Go ahead. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I had a question. I've heard the answer before about riding in the back of a, a, a tr- an open truck bed. Yep. Um, but a question that I have is, I've got a full size truck with a, uh, a topper on it, mm-hmm. and I put uh, put a, uh, across the back a sheet of plywood that I fasten to the bed, and it's it's used actually when we camp or whatever for sleeping on it. Question is, can kids ride on? top of that plywood in the topper when the truck's going down the road. Are you first off, are you are you always the only guy that makes it home from camping trips? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the kid. Yeah, right. You know what? <laughs> Some guys wouldn't blame you either. So what's the deal? Can the kids ride in the back? So this one has two two answers. Number one, from a legal strict legal interpretation, yeah. You can do that. Um, From if a there's, safety it, standpoint. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Don't do it. Yeah. Guy um, goes camping with six people, comes home alone every time. Yeah, that's so crazy. <laughs> there, are a lot, there are some things that are legal but unsafe. So in that case, just let common sense prevail and don't do it. Yeah, that's that crazy law we talked about where you can throw as many kids in the back of your pickup truck and go 80 miles an hour down the freeway, but you put your dog in there and you're in trouble. Yeah, that's, that one's difficult to interpret, too. I've looked and looked for that dog one, and then there's some stuff that sort of meets that criteria, but there's nothing that prohibits you having a human being in the back and, <laughs> and having them belted. That's so. how we rode up to my buddy's cabin all the time, though. His dad would throw us in the back seat, or in the, you know, in the back of the uh, pickup truck, and that's it. I yeah. run for your life. I just dressed my dog up like one of my kids. That was, that's a good idea, too. Yeah, my, no, old I, man, my old man made makeshift beds that he threw in the back of his truck. We'd go all the way to Canada like this. Um, there were bins in there that held beer, and we were forced to uh, urinate into, uh, like, a Tupperware dish. He wouldn't stop for the bathroom breaks. You he would, he's a trucker. I mean, that, that's his deal. He's, he's got the, he knows how to do the long hauling, doesn't he? Langer, here's a uh, emergency text. Uh-oh. Wife going into labor as we speak. Okay to speed? No, it's not. <laughs> what does he do? <laughs> uh, if it's that big of a deal, just pull over and call 911. Uh, we get those once in a while where people are blowing red lights trying to get to the hospital, and we don't encourage that. We've oh, had... trying to get to the hospital? I thought he was just speeding away from the scene. No, no, no. He, he, <laughs> See you, sucker! He, he, he wants this kid. My suggestion was going to be, I mean, you can just walk. She's pregnant. She's not going to catch you. Mm-hmm. We've had some pretty nasty crashes and intersections with people trying to get to the hospital, and then, then you don't end up getting to the hospital. So, you know, the time you save trying to speed 10 or 20 over to get, you know, 
10 miles of the hospital, it's not going to make a difference. So obey the laws if it's an emergency, call 911 and we'll help you get there. Really? You like you'll go lights and sirens in front of them or something? Well, we'll help you get there. We'll get an ambulance or we'll figure out how quickly you need to get there. But we don't. We wouldn't escort you. Have there. you delivered a baby before? I haven't. Okay. I haven't. We watch it all the time. We have first aid training all the time, and we always sit through the videos and go through the training. But I have not. Plenty of troopers have though. Yeah, they're right. They, yeah. Wouldn't you agree that childbirth is the most unnatural thing in the Whew. face of the earth? I, it, yeah. I. I don't pretty. I have kids but and i didn't particularly enjoy viewing that either right no. exactly no. Dirty, but it's a necessary uh, part of our job you know when we get on the shoulder of the road and a woman's in labor and here it comes you know dirty trick a guy i know pulled on his dad um this dude i know is driving his wife who's incredibly pregnant to the hospital and there's a baby juice explosion in the back of the damn car right they don't make it to the hospital all hell breaks loose and the baby falls out right there uh they get in an ambulance and the dude's dad shows up, you know, uh, he called his dad by the cell phone. Uh, yeah, we don't know what's going on. The baby, I think, is coming out. So the dad gets there not knowing that the baby had already been born. The, the guy and his wife and the new baby jump in the, what do you call that, an ambulance. And he says, yeah, dad, can you take my car home? His dad had no idea that the back seat is absolutely covered in, in oh, just gore. All, all of the stuff that the baby was swimming in for nine months exploded all over the windows. Yeah. And everything. Oh, man. Yeah. So dad jumps in. He's like, oh, God, you got to be kidding me. Now he's driving like a, what do you call that, a plasma placenta mobile. Right. Yeah. yeah gross. Hey, hey, did you guys see that Pinto on our Facebook page? Yeah. What yeah. do you think? Well, a Ford Pinto? The guy with the uh, gas tank inside there, or the uh, gas can. Oh, yeah. We oh, talked yeah. about that. Yeah. From Wisconsin. Yeah, the, yeah guy, it's crazy. Tons of equipment violations as Pinto's going down the road, trooper stops it. The best, you know, the worst equipment violation that's probably the most humorous is he's got an outboard gas can from an outboard motor. You know, like a boat motor sitting yeah. on the passenger seat with the uh, hose running to the engine out the passenger window <laughs> and up over the hood. This that's, thing was a mess. That's how it was getting gas. It's hilarious. Yep. All right. Well, uh, hey, YTL, always good to see you. Thanks for coming in. We appreciate you filling in this morning. You're not a golfer, huh? Oh, very rarely, but... Good for you. He's the boss. Uh, He's yeah. got to keep things in line. Sticking uh, around right. here and holding down the fort.